What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So I wanted to share with you my cold weather driving experience in my Tesla Model Y with a heat pump uh, because it's newer for Tesla and I was a little nervous about it because heat pumps, while much more efficient than a resistive heater, are not quite as good at really cold temperatures. Uh, but before I talk about my experience, I felt like I really had to talk about the heat pump problem that Tesla's been experiencing and they've been working on it and maybe it's partially fixed or all the way fixed but I've been really disappointed in Tesla not talking to customers about this now it's it's probably a sticky situation because it, most companies cannot just come out uh, and say oh yes we have a problem because then everybody's gonna want to sue them and do all this stuff um, but there have been reports if you're not aware of people mostly in Canada but when they're experiencing extremely cold temperatures closer to maybe negative 30 Celsius or below zero Fahrenheit somewhere in that range uh, their heat pumps are failing and they have no heat in their car which is the, the time when you need it the most of course now not only is that extremely cold and dangerous from that aspect if you're not used to driving in this weather without the air and the heat that you can get from that system, your windshield will start to fog. It can even start to ice up. You can get a thin layer of ice on the inside of your windshield, uh, which is obviously very dangerous. And so when the, when the reports of this first started coming out this year, it was you know kind of like, whoa, hopefully this doesn't happen to many people, but it just kept seeming like more and more people were having this problem. Well, nobody really knew what was going on until a thread on Twitter from Tesla owners online, and, and don't get me wrong, like great account, great guy running that account, but why is that the first place we heard from it, Tesla? Like, what? You don't think you would want to put out a PSA? Like, hey, we're investigating uh, some potential, you know, use all the legalese you want, uh, issues with heat pumps in extreme cold. So use caution or something, you know. Uh, but there's this whole thread about how the in the front of the car there's a little kind of louvre that moves back and forth and it opens or closes depending on what the car needs in terms of air to condition the battery and uh, it seemed like that could maybe be getting stuck open and then this cold air is rushing past the sensors and the sensors are saying that something's failing whatever it all leads to uh, the heat not working that's the important part well at the end of this thread <laughs> elon musk responds and goes great explanation like uh okay why are we not hearing anything from you or tesla you know tesla could send out an email they could they have in-app communications they do these little you know oh winter tips and tricks uh, so tesla really could be letting people know um so right now for me it's 10 fahrenheit which is you know cold but not that cold um, not that extreme and um i wanted to share with you my experience you know in these cold temperatures now it has been colder over the past few days but i wanted to uh keep driving in the cold and get some more experience and kind of record this data i use teslify which records the data so here's like my last few days of efficiency and right now we can actually look um at my efficiency right now on this trip so i've gone 19 miles and it's a 341 watt hours per mile average i've been going about 75 um, I cranked it up to 80 there just to pass some traffic and get out of the way. Um, but uh, 340 watt hours per mile is actually not too bad. Now I did a similar video last year with my Tesla Model 3 that had a resistive heater. And so, hold on here. Well, there's not really much room for me to get over. So I'm just gonna stay here, I suppose. There looks to be enough room for me. Um, so. I did this video last year with my Model 3 that had a resistive heater to kind of look at the efficiency, uh, but there's a few differences we need to talk about before I really make this comparison because it's not an apples to apples comparison. Number one, last year it was negative <laughs> 10 the, the, the day I made the video. It, it, that was the low. Uh, I think the warmest part of my drive was negative 4 or something like that. Uh, I'm driving now a Model Y instead of a Model 3. So Model Y has a slightly bigger battery now, the newer 3s and Ys do. Model Y is bigger, of course, so worse aerodynamics. I am on winter tires this year, which are less efficient, have more grip in these temperatures, so that's a hit to efficiency there. Um, the tires are bigger, tires and wheels are bigger on the Model Y, 19 inch versus the 18s I had on my Model 3. So just keep in mind, you know, of course there's some differences. My Model 3 was a 2018, this is a 2021 that has, you know, who knows, uh, I have the rear casting, which makes the car lighter in that aspect. Um, so there's a lot of differences, but it's still an electric car. And the main difference we're gonna see here uh, is gonna be the heat pump versus the resistive heater. Because 
the number one thing for your car in efficiency is speed. Uh, so if you can reduce your speed, you'll save some energy. But number two is gonna be climate and things like uh, wind and temperature and a cold battery. So what you're seeing here are my numbers. Um, I can also bring this chart up so we can see kind of my efficiency over time you can go over the last 15 miles just to see a little more. Um, but I did precondition my battery. So I warmed my battery before I started driving with the uh, built into the app where you can just tell it's preconditioned by the time you leave. My car was warmed up, which helps immensely with, the, with efficiency. Uh, I also am driving about 75 miles an hour, like I said, but with some traffic around, kind of being behind cars, I'm obviously going slower than that now, that will help your efficiency as well. But so I've honestly been a tiny bit disappointed in the uh, extreme winter efficiency of the Model Y. Now I understand that heat pumps, when you get lower and lower in temperatures, they become less and less efficient. So the huge benefit of a heat pump is that it's extremely efficient uh, compared to other forms of heating and cooling. But when you get to extreme lows, you need to use more energy to pull heat. So heat pumps just move energy around. Uh, so to pull heat out of cold places, you need to use more and more energy with the heat pump. And so it kind of loses that efficiency advantage while also having kind of a lower limit um, in terms of where it will work and how well it will work. Now, my experience has been really good. Even on my zero degree Fahrenheit day, the heat worked perfectly fine. Um, if I touch right here and feel up in the vent, it is extremely warm. Like it's not even really that comfortable for me to hold my hand there because the air coming out is so warm uh, coming out of there. So my heat pump experience personally has been great. It does work really well, but <laughs> I wanted to share that there are potential problems when you get really cold that Tesla's facing. Another thing I was worried about uh, with the heat pump is leaving and having the car warm up quickly when I leave. Now, preheating, getting the car ready before I leave, uh, while the car's plugged in, I was very surprised. The car actually warms up really fast. Um, so ch either, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but check out this clip I took. I used a little you know, uh, temperature thingy um, and check the car before and after uh, warming it up. All right, so I basically just turned everything to high. Again, you can see here, the temperature there is eight degrees or 13. And then if we look up here where the hot air is blasting out first, see, we're getting up to 40. There we go, things are just starting to ramp up. 48, 50, uh, or eight degrees, 11 degrees Celsius, 12, uh, 47, 55 Fahrenheit. So things are really ramping up. You can hear now the fans are going. Okay, cool, so not, not bad, only it's been two or three minutes and things are ramping up. So we'll check on it in a bit. But looking around the car, uh, 11 on that seat, 11 Celsius. I don't think that seat heater's on. So we'll see what the seat is at uh, after it warms up a bit. All right, just uh, 13 minutes later, coming in the car to start driving. Everything here is is uh, cleaned off. Oh, looks like my windshield wipers are still frozen. I may have to go free those. Uh, but the car is warm. It's set to 73. Let's see if we check this here. For Celsius, we're at 42 coming out of the vent or 109 Fahrenheit. So really good there. Uh, I mean, it's really comfortable and warm in here. If we look at this passenger seat, I'm always curious about this. So yeah, it says it's 76, 77 um, or 30 Celsius. So really good. The passenger seats never feel like <laughs> they warm up before you really get in. In that circumstance with the car plugged in, it warmed up really fast and worked really well. I was surprised, however, at how long it took to warm up. One day when I uh, forgot <laughs> for an experiment to see uh, how long it took to warm up without preheating, no, I actually just forgot. Um, but I went for a drive and I did not preheat my car. My car was not plugged in. I just started driving with a really cold car. And I was surprised how long it took to warm up. Now, when I say surprised, you might be thinking, well, did it take a half hour or 20 minutes? No, I mean, it took, you know, less than 10 minutes to warm up. But when you're driving, you know, for five minutes and your car's really cold, it's, it's really cold when you're used to preheating it. So, um, you know, especially compared to a resistive heater, which you turn it on and heat's coming out. There's no, there's no delay. So, um, yeah, now efficiency wise, uh, in my Model 3 last year, in my negative 10 day, I was getting around 400 watt hours per mile. I think it ended up slightly less than that. Um, but as you can see here, we're currently averaging 320, uh, which is better. But on my zero degree day, I was up, uh, I'll have the numbers on screen, but I believe it was closer to like 380 watt, watt hours per mile, uh, doing a very similar drive. So again, keeping in mind the differences, this car is bigger, it's slightly heavier, I have less efficient tires on, 
the efficiency still being better than my smaller Model 3 uh, is pretty impressive because you're seeing that uh, you know efficiency you're getting out of the heat pump. But it's not quite as good as I would hope, uh, especially when Elon Musk talks about you know, oh, we don't need electric cars with much more range than 400 miles. It doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, I hope you mean 400 practical miles because <laughs> when my car's advertised with 400 miles, uh, an electric car, and then you drive it in these conditions, you're not getting 400 miles anymore. You're getting maybe 250 or something like that. So, um, it, depending on, on the exact conditions, of course. So, yeah, I mean, the heat pump's been working well. I've been happy with it. Uh, but let's drive for a bit. I want to see how this efficiency changes over time. Um, how we move through so let's keep going because it is it is uh, seemingly getting lower here the temperature you know now we're up to 11 degrees uh, is going up just slightly so um, yeah the other thing I will note is sometimes this actually gets too warm so you know I have it at 74 right now and it's getting a, a, a tiny bit warm um, and so I turned down to 72 actually the other day I don't know if it's a, a bug or this thing just gets once it's warmed up it's it's really good at heating things but I had lowered it all the way to 68 one day, and it was still like kind of warm, <laughs> just like a little too warm for me. So I was surprised by that because in my Model 3, I really never had it below maybe uh, 70 or so if I wanted to be comfortable um, without it, you know, getting too cold in there. So um, yeah, let's drive for a bit, see how this efficiency does. Okay, so I just did lower the speed to 70 miles per hour just to kind of show uh, the effects of speed on your efficiency. So you can see there on the chart, especially if we zoom in, uh, you get that big dip right there where we dipped down. Um, now we did have to speed back up because we dipped way down because that semi got in our way. Um, and accelerating will use more energy. But as we settle out here, you should see that this line after that dip is going to settle slightly below um, where we were before with our average of around 333. Well, it's a little variable. Um, for reference, it's this dip here where we slowed down behind that semi. I'll put an arrow for you. Um, and that's the rest of the trip. But you can see accelerating. We have a huge uh, kind of up, upwards use of energy as we accelerate. Um, and then other parts, it did kind of start to go down, but we went downhill and then uphill a little bit. So, you know, the efficiency changes with that. So kind of my, my biggest uh, suggestion that I would like, I really think Tesla should be including a resistive backup heater. It's a totally normal thing to have with heat pumps, and I know Tesla's trying to simplify everything, uh, but you could have avoided a lot of headache if, uh, especially these cars that failed, the heat pumps failed, that you uh, had this resistive backup heating for people. Um, somebody was in my way there, so the car didn't want to change lanes. Um, if you had this resistive backup heating kind of sitting there waiting um, to be used in these emergency situations, you know, in below uh, you know, certain temperatures are, are really cold. Now, I will say, I don't think my car ever would have used the resistive heater uh, up until this point, even on my coldest days, but I would honestly feel a little better knowing that it was there, uh, just in case. Because like that zero degree day, I was getting a little nervous, you know, people's heat pumps are failing all over the place, it looked like, um, and I know nothing from Tesla, they, they didn't really reassure me in any way that this wasn't gonna happen to me, or that the problem was actually solved, which, um, to this day, it seems like it's better from what I've heard, but it's not completely fixed. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, if you have any questions about heat pumps or whatever, leave them down below, and you will see me in the next video.